Hey there. I recently released a video about accuracy of a LiDAR data set compared to some total station measurements. And I got a comment back from a surveyor and he was questioning some of the claims they were making. So I wanted to go through step by step, first read that comment and then go through some sources of errors that I believe he's referring to and kind of discuss that with you about the processes that I've taken in order to generate this data as well as get those accuracies and hopefully uh, find if there's any errors in my workflow and learn from anyone in the community who knows more than I do. I'm always a student, always wanting to learn more. I think it's a good mindset to always have. And hopefully uh, also just you can learn something or maybe uh, correct me on somewhere I went wrong. So let's go ahead and dive into the comment first and then go into my three sources of error that I believe that we can talk about and I'll go through them systematically. So. Right here, you can see I posted this on LinkedIn, uh, the 0.49 centimeters, insanely accurate LiDAR data. Cool video, um, check it out. But then Alan H replied, is this adjusted or not? The non-adjusted specs should be a decimeter, 0.320833 of a foot, roughly four inches. And you claim 0 0.0160761, roughly a quarter inch of a foot. A good sales pitch, but I don't believe that is achievable based on ellipsoidal values are not perfect. Okay, so let's kind of break down what he's talking about and go into uh, what I believe uh, the three sources of errors could be from. So he's talking about, is it adjusted, is it not? So there's multiple things we can talk about in adjustments here. And then he mentions ellipsoidal uh, heights as well and not being accurate. So I'm gonna break it down into let me come back here to the screen. Let's break it down into three sources of error and talk about each one of those independently. And let's talk about number one, uh, something called uh, ground to grid error. So that would be in the production of taking the total station shots and then converting them into a actual measurements on the earth at this location. And then likewise, taking the LIDAR data and then changing the projection to match those points and then be able to compare those two together. And then, so that's, we're gonna be talking about this uh, ground to grid conversion. So we're gonna talk about that. And then let's talk about uh, on the vertical datum, this ellipsoidal comment and ellipsoidal heights. And we're gonna get into geoids and talking a little bit about how do we apply geoids? What is a geoid? and any sources of error that can arise from that. And then thirdly, um, I noticed that I did make an error on significant figures, sig figs. And so let me go through my calculations, adjust the sig figs, and then see what the results are then. Um, spoiler alert, it doesn't actually change anything. So that's pretty good. Uh, and I should have known better. Uh, sig figs are very important, guys. So let's go through those three things together right now. So the first question is about this uh, going from the ground to grid. And so what are, we, what are we saying here? So these green dots here on top, these are all captured from a total station. And a total station, let's just total station, is a device like this. And basically all we're measuring is uh, these angles and distances. So at the end of the day, your total station is just gonna give you a bunch of dots. So let me pull up here. These dots, and they all have, you know, a distance between them, and then they all have an angle, you know, from maybe from this first dot over to the next ones. So what we need to do is we need to take these measurements and then put them onto the earth. And so what we're gonna do is actually take all of these measurements and we will take something of a known point. And this known point could be an NGS monument. You could have surveyed one in yourself using you know, maybe like an Opus solution. So taking a GPS recording for you know, 24 hours or, or less. I mean, you can do, depending on the action you need, you can do a lot less, but you would get a known point. And then, so let me just throw the world on here. And let's just say, we have this known point right here, X. So what we're gonna do is, so I can grab all these points and we can move them all to, we can move this one 
and the whole system as a unit like that, see what I'm doing there, to be right over the top of that. Now this would be, you know, we're, we're localizing these points into this projection here where that dirt's at. But we have another thing called a uh, ground to grid scale factor. So let me show you what that means. So let me select all these and say, let's just, we move them all to there. Now, what if the scale factor was different? What would that do? So let me just adjust the scale. So that one point can still be on top of that X, but I can scale up and down, see how all the other points move, but that one point stays still over that X. So really what we need to do is we need to measure <clears throat> two X's or more. So let me duplicate this guy, duplicate that layer, boom. And then, so if I were to have a second one and now look, they don't actually all overlap, but let me see if we can do this on Photoshop to simulate what's going on. So the scale factor would then scale us up. And so boom, boom. Now I know the scale, as you see, I'm scaling of all of my total station shots. So now if I had that localized and I moved that one point to that localized and then had the scale factor, now I can assume that the rest of my shots will all match the earth. Okay, so that's scale factor. Now, coming back to our data set here, the surveyor did provide us with the uh, all the total station shots and they were all in the correct projection. You can see here they're in this uh, NAD 83 Realization 2011, Texas South Central US survey feed, six, uh, EPSG code 6588. Now, if we had a scale factor that we needed to use, um, so let's say that surveyor gave us all these shots and it was in this 6588 projection with a scale factor. Now, we would need to take the LIDAR data and make that match into that projection with the scale factor. And so in the rock cloud, you can reproject into that 6588 and come into your advance and, and also have the scale factor. So, you know, we didn't need it in this case. So I don't think that's what the comment was about, but I'm explaining one source of error. One source of error could have been when that surveyor adjusted those total station shots and applied a scale factor when they localized it. The question could have meant, did you also apply that scale factor? Um, we didn't need to, so I'm going to rule that one out, but I'm trying to get down to the bottom. What this, what he means by adjusted? And then we'll get to the ellipsoidal next, and then we'll go to the third one. So that scale factor applies to the LIDAR data as well. So the same way I showed you the scaling in and out of the points, that actually applies to all the LIDAR data as well. Now, a caveat here on scale factors, if your project is very large, so maybe a highway, a uh, road, so it's very big, this scale factor actually changes over distance. So if you have a really big one, you could actually be required to have multiple scale factors throughout your project, and you need to adjust your data accordingly in order to match that state plane grid um, at those different locations. So that's another caveat. If the project's really big, one scale factor is not enough. This case, it was only a few hundred feet long, guys. One scale factor is totally fine. Um, but again, we didn't run into that. Number two, let's go into that one. Let's talk about the uh, orthometric height and ellipsoidal heights and geoids. Okay. Now, the other one was scale factor. That's that stretching and contrasting. Now let's talk about up and down. So up and down is another one of these stretching and contrasting kind of ideas. So we have this ellipsoidal height. So basically the whole globe is represented. We have this thing called WS84. It's called the reference ellipsoid, which we use. And you can describe this by six parameters. Technically we got two, basically the equatorial radius, the flattening, but then we have two other gravitational constants, angular velocity, and we can derive the last two, the polar, uh, semi-minor axis and the eccentricity squared. Anyway, six parameters describes this sphere. It's an ellipsoid. Um, but that is not representative of the actual gravitational surface. So if you were to take a bubble level and go along this 
actual ellipsoid, the bubble level would not technically always be level. If you were, let's just say, come back to this picture here, and we have this ellipsoid and this H. So if I measure this height above, so let's say I'm always 10 feet above it, and if I'm always 10 feet above the ellipsoid and go around, I would actually not, so if I was 10 feet above the ellipsoid and going around, the bubble level wouldn't always be level. So what we want to do is define a gravitational equipotential surface. And what we do is we define that and we make something called a geoid. And this geoid, if I show you here, I have geoid 18, which is the one that we use for the North America vertical datum, 1988. Currently, that's what we're using, geoid 18. Um, and this is actually just corrections applied to right here to your ellipsoid. So you can see if I measured this ellipsoid height h, I would need to apply a correction in in order to get this big h number. Okay, complicated. But we have an ellipsoid, a geoid, which only exists in respect to in, in respect to this ellipsoid. And now we're applying these corrections. Now let's talk about those corrections because that's going to get to the root of the issue that we're talking about here. So this geoid, the way it's communicated is in a raster format, meaning it has pixels. So each pixel applies, you can see here on the right-hand side, we have negative 11 to 7.2 meters of height difference. Each pixel will be apply a shift in the number in order to get you that new number. And the resolution of these pixels is really important here because that's gonna tell us, just like the scale factor I said, if it goes really long, those scale factors, you could need to have another one for later, another one later, same thing with this vertical one. But how big are those pixels? So geoid 18 is communicated in one arc minute. And so I went ahead and drew, just to make an arc minute, it's not intuitively makes sense to, to me or anyone, but I, I went ahead and, if I can pull this up, made a arc minute. Give me a second. There we go. So I drew a one arc minute map across San Antonio, just to give you a perspective how big those pixels are. And so again, anything inside one of these pixels has only one constant number offset. So I can measure, let's see this pixel here. If it'll allow me to, yeah, basically 0.9 miles. So this pixel is pretty big. So anything inside of this one pixel would have only a constant offset applied to it. If I was doing like a big road going through all these pixels, well, from one pixel to the next pixel, you can have different different changes of that undulation is what they call them. They're called undulations. So if we looked at this, this actually isn't a continuous surface as they're drawing it here. These are pixels, pixels, it's pixels of this geoid. And it's gonna apply that undulation. And what we do is we do an interpolation between these uh, pixels in order to calculate the difference. And in Rock Cloud, when it's LiDAR data, you can see here we applied this geoid 18 to this data set. So it applies those undulations and we interpolate between undulations in order to make a smooth surface. Otherwise you'd get discontinuities because it's like this pixel. Now we reach the next pixel, boom. Because again, the file that they, you know, the, uh, I think it's the NGS provides for us uh, is a raster format. Okay. Long story short, let's talk about that in a little bit of detail of what that means here. So what we did on this data set is we had those control points and we projected it into this uh, North America vertical data, 1988, using the geoid 18. And we applied a constant offset in order to match that one point. So let me show you, I can actually just come up by two feet, you know, Five, three feet, five feet. So you can see a constant offsets going on here. This is just constant lifting the whole data set up. And so whenever you do that, as long as the data set is with respect to the size of those, those pixels, those geoids, um, the geoid resolution, this makes total sense because at, at the end of the day, if there's only a con one constant offset would be applied inside that pixel anyways. So 
you know, if you are aligning the data set to those total station shots that those were projected into that projection, now you're in that projection and you're aligning and matching your two data sets, then a constant offset makes sense. So I feel pretty good about that. Uh, but again, I'm welcoming any feedback uh, on this, this methodology. I think mathematically, there's no other way to do it and it makes sense to me. Uh, so I think that's fine. So that's the ellipsoid argument. So he was mentioning ellipsoid and this ellipsoid height. Um, you can't measure to some accuracy on ellipsoids. It's a mathematical figure. I mean, you, it's, you know, it's infinitely precise actually. So I, I, I don't know, like that's, I don't know, other than understanding the undulations and did you apply multiple undulations to this? No, but we wouldn't have to cause we're smaller than the grid size of the undulations. So we wouldn't need to do that. All right, guys, <laughs> number three, I did make a mistake here. Uh, and then I went and fixed it and let's check a look at what that is. So here uh, we have, this is the raw data that I showed in the video. And obviously we can see here's the surveyor's data you provided to us in feet. And it's down to 0.312, so three significant figures. And then here's the numbers that we grabbed from the rock cloud. And I can come back here and show you in the rock cloud if I were to grab a point and show you kind of where the error happens. So you can see right there on this 0.2, it's got three sig figs. So that's great. But then over here, you know, I think this is just a bug. Well, we've got to fix this is that this uses the mathematical precision of a floating point uh, integer. So that is why it's so much longer. So let's come back to our data set here. And what I did, so you can see, again, tons of sig figs, tons, or these actually aren't significant. These are just figs, unsig figs. Um, so not correct. And then move myself over here, here at the bottom, that's where we get that 0.349 and 0.49. Now, what I did is I went ahead and applied sig figs to our measurements here, applied them to feet. And then here, when I converted to centimeters, um, you can see that we're using the 30.48 uh, up here on the top left. You see that? And so that's why I truncated it down to two because that was kind of the limiting in this conversion, uh, the limiting factor of those sig figs. So, uh oh, I'm going to control Z that. There we go. So even when I do this sig figs and come down, I get 0.35 and 0.49. And then I did this, you know, 0 0.001 feet equals plus or minus 0 0.03 centimeters. So there is that 0 0.03 centimeter error bar. Um, and then we have the 0 0.35 and 0 0.49. If we look back to the other one, you can see it's 0.349 and 0.49. So it doesn't actually change the, the the metrics I was reporting. So good catch. It definitely is. Yeah, I totally 100% agree. Sig fig, sig fig, sig figs all day. This is basic. You know, I actually taught university physics for a bit, and I would drill this in my students' heads, and yeah, I I screwed it up myself. So there we go. Uh, so again, coming back to the original comment, if someone can help me, I don't exactly know what Alan's referring to. Why? why the methods that we're using all of a sudden goes to four inches. You know, why is he view that like four inches is the best accuracy you can get? I don't see how that's possible. The only thing I would say is maybe saying, hey, using a total station. Yeah, you can't get better than four inches using a total station because user error, like in his experience, maybe his users have a lot of error. And he's like, yeah, they always just screw it up, man. So Whoever is doing that, I don't trust them. And so because I don't trust them, we say four inches. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. If you guys can help me out, I'd love to have some feedback and make myself better and make the community better. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next one. Ciao.